Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. We're looking in John chapter 18 and looking at verse 29 to 32. And we're looking at that time in which the judge of all of the world, all of the universe, the Almighty God, is being judged by mortal men that think that they are able to bring judgment on him. It is both the religious leaders of, Ro of the Jews and the political leaders of Rome that are trying to judge Jesus. So let's look at the passage. Pilate, that's the first name that appears. He just comes to us on the scene without introduction. Who is Pilate? Well, there's been a lot written about him, and we have found an inscription back in 1962 in uh, Tiberius uh, Caesarea uh, on the Mediterranean that actually has an inscription of, of uh, Pilate. Uh, he is a historical figure. We know from writings from Josephus and others that he was a real figure. He is a second-rate uh, centurion, a captain of a of a, a, a Roman army, and uh, that uh, he had happened to marry uh, Claudius, who was the granddaughter of Tiberius Caesar, and that's how he ends up being then in the position of governor of Judea for 10 years, for four years prior to this verse and to this incident. We probably would not know him today. We certainly wouldn't recite him in the Apostles' Creed had it not been for one defendant appearing before him named Jesus of Nazareth. But here we find Pilate. Pilate, it says, went out to them. What had happened? Well, that night, Jesus was tried first by Annas to see if there was any way in which they could proceed. And Pilate and Annas uh, is uh, determining that there is cause. He goes then to um, uh, Caiaphas, and Caiaphas is the acting political high priest of the Jews, and also the one who is the president of the uh, Sanhedrin. And so there we have the second trial, and there they determine that he is guilty of blasphemy, and then the Sanhedrin, they have a trial, and they determine that he is to be executed. Now he is being led by all of the priests and by the Sanhedrin and the scribes and being brought over now to Pilate. Pilate is a Roman governor, and there is, according to Luke, there is a large gathering that has amassed around uh, Pilate's uh, palace at this time, uh, probably the fortress of Antonio that overlooks the uh, Temple Mount. And it says that Pilate went out to them. Some believe, well, the reason is because the Jews couldn't go inside of a Gentile fortress. It certainly would defile them on Passover, but it's not that. It's that Pilate is coming out. He brings out the rostrum, and he begins to set up court. You see, in the Roman Forum, and that's where we get our English word for, uh, forensics, is that the uh, place of court would be on the temp the temple steps it would be if you went to rome you would see the temple of saturn which is where the ancient uh, forum or court would be held and it would be there so he is now setting up court and then it says that pilate and the next thing that he says is what accusation do you bring against this man notice he's probably pointing right at jesus when he says this man, he's not disparaging him, but neither is he giving any uh, accolades to him either. He is just simply indifferent, and he is saying, what is your accusation? The word accusation in the uh, Greek is categoria. We get our English word category. It's actually a legal term, and it is, what is your accusation? You see, before you can have a sentence carried out, executed, there has to be first a sentence passed. Before you can have a sentence passed, you have to have an indictment. Before you can have an indictment, you have to have an accusation. So he's starting at the beginning. They're wanting to jump to, we want him crucified. We want him killed. We want him done. Remember Caiaphas, the high priest, said, it's expedient for us that one man should die for the nation. We have already jumped to this conclusion. They had presumed 
arrogantly in their pride that Pilate would be on their side. You see, he had already sent out a contingency of about 600 the night before and to apprehend Jesus. So obviously they had been talking to each other. And so it was at six o'clock in the morning, which is normal time, by the way, for the Romans to begin court that he begins officially by saying to the Jewish leaders, what is your accusation? What has he done? They answer by saying to him, if he were not a malefactor, if he were not an evil de doer, we would not have delivered him to you. And so they are presuming that they will be impressing him with a large crowd that's around, with their robes and regalia and being priests and being so pompous and, and proud that they, speaking, would cause this Roman governor to just relinquish and say, you're right, I'm impressed by you, but he's not. In fact, what Pilate does in verse 31, he says to them, you take him and you judge him by your law. You see, the fact of the matter is, they had concluded he was to be crucified, but they had not concluded why. He had said that he was God. So they immediately jumped to the conclusion he had blasphemed because he claimed to be God. What Pilate is saying to them is, you look into your law. Is he not God? <laughs> you see, they never actually looked to see if he was God. They just heard him say, before Abraham was, I am. They picked up stones and wanted to stone him. They didn't look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And they didn't look at Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. A virgin would conceive and bear a son. They didn't look at Micah, at, at Micah chapter 5, and verse 2, that he would be born in Bethlehem. They didn't look at all the other 300 scriptures that defined what Messiah would be. They didn't see that. Instead, they had just jumped to the conclusion he had to die. And yet, at the same time, the Jews come back and they say to Pilate, and now we're looking at the end of verse 31, and they therefore said to him, to Pilate, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. They didn't have the accusation. They never brought that forward. All they said is, we don't have the power. That's an incredible confession they're making. What they're saying is, the power is in Rome. Later on, they will say, we have no king but Caesar. They are acknowledging that they don't have power. Now, that is actually a fulfillment of Scripture. In Genesis, Bershit, chapter 49 and in verse 10, it says, The lawgiver shall, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until the lawgiver, neither shall the lawgiver leave until Shiloh, Messiah, come. In other words, they will always have the power until Messiah's there. They are acknowledging both they don't have the power, secondly, Messiah is there. Here he stands right there with him. Now we look at verse 32 and that reads that the saying of Jesus, notice this began with Pilate, then it goes to their response to Pilate, then Pilate again responding to them, and then the Jews speaking, the last one who gets the final word is God himself. Jesus therefore his saying might be fulfilled, which was signifying the death he would die. What was it that Jesus said? Jesus said, and this is in John 3, As Moses raised up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be raised up. And then in chapter 12, where he says, And if I be lifted up, Jesus said, I will draw all people to myself. 
Or in Matthew chapter 20, verse 17 to 19, he's speaking to his disciples and telling them in advance that the Son of Man will be betrayed, that he will be delivered up to the Gentiles, that they will mock him, that they will scourge him, that they will crucify him, and the third day he will rise again. What they don't realize is that their own scriptures, according to the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said, His body shall not remain overnight on a tree. This is Deuteronomy 21, verse 23. Nor shall you bury him that day, for he who hangs on a tree is cursed of God. You see, the one who has the final word is Jesus, isn't he? If you ever play chess, you know it's not the one who starts the game, but the one who finishes the game. The last move is always God's. So are you at this time willing to acknowledge the one who judges is not you and me, it is God himself. Let's pray. Father, thank you that not only have you judged and determined that all of us are sinners and all of us have fallen far short of your glory, you have also determined that your son would take our judgment he would take our penalty, he would die in our place, and that he would rise again. And therefore, we who believe and trust in you would have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.